Paul, you know, my name is Mark Perone. Uh, I'm the president of the United Food and Commercial Workers International Union. It's America's largest retail food uh, and food union. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we're 1.3 million members of retail food employees, non-food retail, uh, meat packing, food processing, uh, healthcare and pharmacy workers across the United States and Canada. Uh, all of you on this call are going to hear from some of our frontline workers in retail food packing uh, and also some of our healthcare members, which uh, many of you haven't heard from as of yet. Uh, before you hear from those workers, however, we're also going to talk about uh, what's happening in the, in the uh, food processing meatpacking division of our union. And our international vice president and director of food processing and meatpacking uh, is going to talk to you about those specific insights that we're witnessing in the meatpacking industry. Uh, First, I want to provide you some background about what's ongoing and the serious challenges that our members and other non-union workers continue to face. You know, contrary to some of what employers and I think even some of our government leaders, you know, want us to believe, you know, COVID-19 still is very real. Uh, and what we're uh, seeing is overall in increases in cases again uh, the last time we did this call, we mentioned how some union and non-union employers uh, had done away with uh, hazard pay, or you can call it uh, heroes pay in some cases, companies like Amazon, uh, Walmart, and Kroger. Uh, even though that we're over 100 days into this pandemic, uh, the fact is COVID-19 uh, and its crisis that it's created hadn't passed. Uh, we all know that it's growing in some states. We're witnessing increases in Oklahoma, Texas, Florida, Arizona, South Carolina. Uh, we've seen these cases rising and, and the concerns of our members and other workers uh, are rising as well. What's different today compared to 100 days ago? Well, state, federal, and local leaders are failing to establish uh, clear and enforceable safety standards. We know that instead we're witnessing a mix uh, in states and cities and counties. They've established some safety standards uh, like requiring masks uh, and others, you know, don't have any standards at all and no requirements. Uh, even when there are requirements, nobody's doing enforcement. Uh, similarly, we've seen some of our employers mandate masks uh, while others haven't. What's missing is true enforcement, as I indicated a little bit earlier, only safety standards. Even uh, where they do exist, the fact is, is that America's food, uh, retail, meatpacking, healthcare workers should not be the ones that have to do the enforcement. Uh, it should be the companies and the government. Even worse, over 100 days into this crisis, America's leading companies still refuse to tell the American people how many of their workers have been exposed, how many of them have died, and how many of them are sick. Let me stress why we think that this is important. Uh, if the American people do not know how many of these workers have died or become sick or exposed, it's easier for the government and those companies, quite honestly, to ignore their responsibilities. Simply put, it's impossible to hold the government or corporate America accountable when they hide the true impact of this outbreak. The human cost of this terrible pandemic can't be ignored, nor should it be hidden to date based on the information that we have. Over 196 of our members in food retail, meat packing and food processing uh, and healthcare have died. A total of 238 of our members across all the industries that we represent have died. Over 29,000 of our members in food retail, healthcare, meatpacking, and food processing uh, have been impacted or exposed to COVID-19. And over the last month, over 2,300 of our members have been impacted or exposed. Yet nobody can tell us how many workers at Walmart or Amazon 
have become sick or died? And does anybody really believe that they don't have that information available to them? The fact of the matter is they keep hiding behind privacy that they don't want to release the information because it's private. Nobody has to tell anybody's name, just like we released numbers just then. With respect to the federal government, the failure that we've seen of this administration to enforce OSHA standards is directly responsible for why so many employers are able to avoid adopting stronger safety standards and why so many frontline workers that we've seen have become exposed to this virus. You know, please understand that there's something fundamentally wrong when our federal government and Congress is more concerned about spending time on how to figure out how to minimize the liabilities of corporate America, to give them immunity, rather than trying to address the growing health crisis that we face with the rise of COVID-19 in our workplaces. Given this context, USCW, will be taking the following actions over the coming days and the next few weeks. First of all, we're gonna be calling for every retail, food operation, meat packing and healthcare, non-union and union, essential workers to immediately, as a minimum, to be paid $15 an hour. And we also want the reinstatement of all hazard pay or hero pay in all states where cases are rising and to directly connect hazard pay to those number of cases. Secondly, we're gonna be calling for every state, county, government to mandate the wearing of masks in public places to compel employers and companies to enforce the use of masks. And simply put, the fact is that if our national airlines can quite frankly do this, there is no excuse why retailers like Kroger and Walmart can't do the same, especially with the, in the fact that we have more workers being exposed by more people in these stores than we do on those planes. To highlight the importance of masks, we're gonna be launching a targeted ad campaign beginning in the state of Ohio with some of our world's leading health experts uh, to indicate why there is a need to wear masks when in public to reduce the spread of this killer virus that we're dealing with. Third, we're gonna be calling for a national public registry where all employers above a thousand workers have to release public figures every month on the number of their workers that have died, become sick or exposed to COVID-19. As I've said before, never in the history of this union have we been more concerned about the health and welfare of America's workers, union and non-union? This statement is true now as it was 100 days ago. And that is why this union will continue to do all it can to protect the health and welfare of all workers across retail food, meat packing, and health care in this nation. 